are orcs ramping up to be one of the best factions in the game? Will our win rate increase today on Ops episode 22? I'm going to break down a small portion of the MFM just to show you our points decreases, right? And show you two brand new lists in the new meta of Warhammer 40k. Stay tuned. Here goes the MFM, where I'm going to show you a couple of the decreases in points units that we had them decreased in. For those of you who hasn't seen this already, just looking at your app, or you might just be living under a rock, whatever it might be, right? But first things first, I wanted to show you the Beast Snaggers went down substantially, right, to 95 points. I thought they were worth taking in the first place. I think they're in an even better kind of uh, situation now where you can take a lot more of them. I know that I was only taking 20 because I only have currently two skill rigs myself that are painted up. I'm not planning on getting a third one, but taking a third one could be very good if you want to tech into that for War Horde, right? War Horde is probably the best attachment for orcs right now. I think Bully Boys is back as well. And I'm going to show you two lists today right after this where I'm going to have one Bully Boys, which is my favorite faction. I think they have some of the best attachment uh, rules and some of the best strategies in the game, right? But uh, I'm also going to show you a War Horde as well because I think they're the stronger detachment. And I like using my Beast Nagas in the War Horde detachment and a lot of my skill rigs, all right? So B Snaggers went down. The Big Mech went down as well, which is really good, right? The Big Mech has the ability to get attached to a unit. And that unit can move horizontally through anything, right? Including a screening unit. So just to let everyone know about that, right? Any units that are screening you other than Spore Mines, right? Which are uh, for Tyranids. Uh, those those pesky spore mines, they state that if you uh, advance next to them, you can't actually do it, right? So you can't land next to them and actually advance. So they're the only ones still in the game that'll stop you from doing that. But any type of screens, anybody has infiltrators themselves, if you're, if you're doing a mirror match against orcs, or if they're screening with any Fenrisian wolves from Space Wolves, or just uh, Drukhari, um the core and things like that, you're just going to be able to go right through them as long as you can pass them and not land on their bases with your bases, right? So that's awesome. I put that into a unit on my boys, and I'm going to show you that here shortly. Big Mech and Mega Armor, I don't know. I've tried them a couple of times. you got to have a certain play style to actually use him, right? You can't put him in the vehicle. You don't want to waste the points, at least, for doing that, right? And then you want to take a fat unit of six of them so he can keep on resin the Mega Nomps. Um, even going down 10 points, I still think he really is not an auto include, especially that it's not plus one to hit. I mean, he can help you out a little bit to do shooting, but orcs really don't do shooting that well in this detachment. So not mega amazing. I think it's good and it's decent. It catches a lot of people off guard. I've actually played against people with this unit and the ability to actually bring back a mega armored you know knob every single turn was surprising to a lot of people where they were like they just don't die they're already super resilient uh strong enough high toughness and they were tough to kill in the first place and now you're just bringing them back and people tr tend to ignore them so if you want to use them as a tech piece like that where you're just holding objectives with them with the big mech and mega armor that can be beneficial if you have the points if you have other things that is doing the heavy lifting, 
that can be a direction that you could go into. Big Mech with Shock Attack Gun. I'm super surprised that this actually went down. I think this was used uh, quite frequently, especially when it comes to uh, Dread Mob, right? Or Dread Mafia, as I like to call it. So that's very, very good. I thought a couple other units could have went down in points instead of this, but I'm happy that it did. I know a lot of Dread Mob players out there, Dread Mafia players out there, are super stoked about that. I'm super stoked about the boys going down to 80 points, 8 points a model. I think that's absolutely amazing. I think that's a resurgence for Green Tide, once again, for people to use them. So I think that's going to be super strong. More models, right? If you were taking uh, 6 units of them, now you're minus 60 points. You might be able to get another unit of them, depending on what enhancement you have. And take away that enhancement and get another unit of boys so um i know a lot of people were taking around 80 roughly so you might be able to take 100 now i know that i've thrown in one unit of 20 in one of my units and one of my list and um i really like them i plug in the big mech with the driller into that unit and a war boss and i think it's a fantastic unit to really go out there go through all of the screens right he he kind of that unit kind of fills the role of what zodgrod did right with gretchen but better i think right a, a lot more attacks higher strength not the same abilities as zodgrod's unit where they're minus one to wound plus one to wound plus one to hit things like that other than the war boss giving it to them but i think they're super amazing the Death Dread, I'm super excited that the Death Dread went out, uh, went down, and a lot of points, right? Um, this is a, a really good, it's a great sculpture. It's a great miniature, great looking miniature, right? I think it's great that the Death Dread went down in points. I think it can be used as a flanking unit. You take two of these at 240 points. I don't think they're bad at all, especially if you're taking them with extra close combat weapons right and they're flat three damage so i think that's really good death copters super amazing now you're just going to see more 18 model death copters and people's uh speed freak armies things like that even though i still think that speed freaks is not the greatest attachment not a great detachment at all but i think that helps out the detachment ultimately so really nice to see the death copters in there maybe we'll see them in uh dread mafia right more uh Duff copters in there and they can you know get some assistance in there because they have good shooting so uh the gorkonaut um i always thought the gorkonaut was an okay model i don't think it has enough shooting and things like that but i'm i'm super impressed that it went down in points as well the hunter rig nobody really uses the hunter rig but you can use it if you if you're thinking about just transporting a bunch of different beast snaggers right uh the kill rig of course now everybody wants to use a kill rig i know a lot of us previously were using a kill rig now a lot of people are going to jump on that bandwagon where they're using the kill rig this is a fantastic model the ability to stack multiple strengths like i was telling you i'm using two in my army right now so the ability to make you know knob strength 12 uh things like that super beneficial right it's only 310 points to have two of these really really nice commandos going down five points i was still taking commandos this you know it, it doesn't make it an auto include for me so i'm just happy that they went down in points uh it saves me a couple points for a couple of my units a couple of my list rather right so that helps out with that so i'm really impressed mega noms going back down five points only i think they should have still went down an additional five points to 30 points per model they're 35 points per model now but it is what it is you know they nerfed us and nerfed us to the ground because we were doing really good we had a an high a tier almost s tier type of army with the mega noms had a four up feel no pain now they've made it where it's just a five up feel no pain I still think they should have went down to 30 points because we got that nerf. So they kind of try to hit it 
in the middle so people wouldn't abuse the mega knobs again i still think a lot of people are going to take a bunch of mega knobs a minimum of 10. mostly if you're taking bully boys you're going to take 15 right so i'm super excited that mega knobs are back so they're back on the menu baby and bully boys are back because of that morka knots and uh I, I like this unit. I like the Morkanon going down. I just don't think it went down enough for what it can do in the game. And then last but not least, the Tank Busters. Uh, I think they only did this because they're dropping the new models for the kill team. Their newer models that are coming out are looking beautiful. Their sculpts and things like that. I don't think they're still worth it in game, right? Maybe you can find some value in them let me know down in the comments section if you start using tank busters especially the new ones that are coming out in the kill team box set right let me know how they look let me know how they're producing for you uh in game things like that but i don't know i don't i don't think they're actually gonna do very well on the game tabletop so all right so i'm gonna go to these two lists really quickly break them down to everyone participating i'll be right back All right, I'm back. So I wanted to break down the first army list, which is the bullies is back, right? This is a new list that I'm using for the new meta. Like I was telling people in previous shows that I do on this platform on Onslaught Gaming 40K. Basically, if we gained a unit, everybody else lost a unit or two and more like they lost two units, right? So hopefully we start really punching up a lot higher when it comes to the, you know, competitive track. We, we might get into a better location or a situation where we might actually be our lower a, a tier. I know we won't be S tier like we used to be or close to it, but I think uh, we're going to be a very uh, good army. I think we're going to be in a very good place. A lot of different variant army lists are going to start coming out very soon and you're going to start seeing them performing very well hopefully gts things like that hopefully you start you know crumping with your orcs and start doing amazing work so the first one is the bully boys is back the bullies is back right so in this list i have boss snickrot i think that for the bully boys he's He's a really good piece in there to help you out with the objectives because a lot of things that you're going to have in this list are going to be doing the heavy lifting, right? Especially the uh, the mega armored knobs, right? Uh, big mech, like I was telling you previously in the M M M M MFM section. Oh my gosh. M M&M M section, MFM section, right? That I'm taking a big mech in here with the custom mega blaster and Trilla. And this is the one that I was telling you has the ability to go through street screens. So I'm attaching him with one of the war bosses in here. Uh, you also have the ability in, in uh, war horde to put him in there and put on uh, follow me lads, things like that. That can really help you out a lot. Get that plus two movement and really beat those screens, get past those screens, right? So I have two war bosses in here, war boss and mega armor, three of them, one with the teleporter, right? Teleporter, I think is more important even now, right? And you're going to see that the unit that I attach this to as well. I play a little bit differently because it's what I own. You can do it however you want. If you want to attach them to a unit of uh, twin kill saws, that's fine. Having 15, 16 twin kill saws is amazing. I like to always have one unit that has power claws and shooters, right? Just to help out a little bit, um, to get a fatter unit in there, and to have a little bit more attacks, especially when you have a unit of six of them. And I'm going to show you that here very shortly. But the teleporter is attached to uh, the mega armored war boss and to that unit. And then the other one has the Ed Stompa. Everyone knows what the Ed Stompa does. Basically, I had 10 extra points, so I just threw the Ed Stompa on them. All right. So I got 20 boys. Obviously, the knob has the Power Claw. Two units of Gretchen, 
right? You always want to try to get that CP, get that free CP on a four up. Multiple screens as well to hold your back 40. That unit of boys can do that as well if you need them to. So that can always help out if you need to screen for a lot of uh, uh, armies that like to deep strike a lot of different units. Units, you know, like Inceptors or demons where they like to deep strike within six inches things like that right and keep them away from your your mega knobs stuff like that so so as you can see here i have the mega knobs six of them custom shooters and power claws like i was telling you i'm attaching him to that uh to the mega knob war boss right i like to take this unit put him on the teleporter deep strike him it's a lot of attacks especially when you're on the wall especially when you get two walls with it as well right so you get a lot of additional attacks you get the ability to have multiple feel no pains you get more bodies you still get that plus one to hit right so very strong and i'm so happy i know everybody else is so happy if you haven't heard the great news right the war bosses and mega armor finally had the ability they changed the keyword on there and they said that you can get flat three damage on your weapon as long as the wall is active same thing for the war boss where he gets his plus four attacks so while the wall is active you get all of your special abilities which it should have been like that um you know for a very long time but it is what it is An another two units of mega knobs but these are five so i'm gonna have 16 in total I think these are really necessary, especially at an okay point in price at 175 points, 210 for the six. Trying, you know, trying to deep strike that unit so you get more bodies, more attacks, things like that. You're also not going to be able to punch up as well as twin kill saws, right? Twin kill saws have a higher strength on their melee weapons as opposed to the power claw. I don't have the skill rigs in here, as you're going to see. So you're not going to be able to get that plus, you know, two strength onto them. Or to anything for that for that matter right so you're gonna have to really prioritize what you're trying to hit with this unit you may want to go against things like a more elite type units instead of vehicles and monster type units leave that up to the mega knobs with the twin kill saws and allow them to take care of those type of units you have two of them plus you have knobs so you're gonna have a lot of attacks uh a, a fat brick of 10 i I've seen a lot of lists where people like to take, you know, just five of them or two units of five with the war boss in both of them. I like to take a fat brick. I like to dish out 40 dice, not including the war boss himself. I think it really deletes just about anything in the game to each their own, right? If you like to take two units and have two war bosses and waste those extra points into the war bosses, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's totally cool but i like to take them in a brick of 10. one unit of five storm boys you know i have snick rock who's going to be able to deep strike take objective markers back 40 things like that so i wanted to take another unit you always want to have two units of that type right or the archetype where you want to be able to have those units deep strike somewhere and jump around the table take objectives um if you get behind enemy lines, you want Snicker out and the Storm Boys to be out there taking that. I have a battle wagon. This did not decrease in points, but everything else decreasing in points allows you the ability to take a battle wagon out, um, which is really nice, especially with Bully Boys. You want them to be super resilient, super tough. But for this one, it's really dependent on what type of matchup you have. But I like to take my boys in here with the Big Mech and the War Boss, right? as this has a transport capacity of 22. So I like to put all of them in there with the zap gun so I don't get you know that lower uh, transport capacity, death rollers, lava, grab and claw, and the four big shooters with the art case. So make a super resilient, super tough, and then three trucks. Just so the knobs and the two units of mega knobs can go into the trucks with their respective war bosses, all right? So let me know if you're playing something similar to this. I really like this Bully Boys list. I think it's going to perform very well. I I like to say that I that I I make decent lists when I make a list. So 
hopefully i start doing very well i'm actually going to go into an event very soon and hopefully you know i i stomp some heads and i do a lot of crumping i'm going to show you the next list here all right on to the new list we have bring the wall this is a war horde list right like i was telling you all i think the best two detachments right now are war horde and bully boys uh dread mafia is amazing as well and green tide is amazing as well it's just not my play style so let me know how you're doing with those two detachments if you're using them so we have four awesome detachments i think are doing very well i really wish you know but we're suffering from all of the greatness that we did what was it, eighth or ninth edition that we did with speed freaks so they're not going to allow us to have all those buggy uh spamming armies all over again uh and do as great as they used to do so war horde it's a really good one i'm still using beast boss in this one right i still think they're absolutely amazing especially with their uh, dev wounds that they do in their attacks so i i think they're really really good especially you know uh attacking things that you want to really delete high damage high strength both of them are going to be attached to a unit of beast snaggers right and then the beast snaggers are going to be inside some kill rigs right and this is the list that i was telling you about that I'm going to take the beast boss beast snaggers and kill rigs so i could just dominate the board these are units that can really do really well i've seen them and i've went against them against you know with, with my world eaters army i like to play world eaters you know just like all probably all of us like to do we, we like to play different melee armies right if we play a different army it's a melee army right so i've actually played into beast boss with beast snaggers without the skill rigs and those get deleted very, very fast. It almost made me feel bad, right? Just looking at orgs, how quickly they can be deleted, especially when they don't have the wall up and they don't have the five plus invo, right? So I I feel like because I've been through that experience, they need to be in a vehicle so they can pop out and really take care of business, right? And because if you try to attack them, you're obviously going to have to attack the skill rig to, you know, to crack open the egg to get the yolk out. So um, I think it's best to put them in skill rigs. And with the reduction in points for skill rigs, I think it's in a very, very good position for them to be in those skill rigs. Right. I'm also taking a war boss with follow me, lads. This is what I was telling you before. I am not taking this one with any boys, but I am taking the war boss unit with 10 knobs i just really love having 10 knobs like i was telling you before i think i save the points also right having <clears throat> um just one war boss in there and a fat unit with a lot of attacks i know sometimes that might be overkill but there are units out there that you really want to overkill or you just really don't want to underestimate and not put a lot of attacks in plus you get the ability to crit on fives Instead of, instead of having different units in War Horde, you really want one unit, a massive unit, that you want to put those crits on fives on, right? I think that uh, Gasgo can fit and, and plug in very well to War Horde into this list as well. I just like to have more boys rather than toys. And he is a big, expensive-ass toy, right? He's amazing. I think that the problem with him is that he needs to be pointed correctly or the battle wagons need to be, you know, pointed uh, more correctly where they're reducing points. Because if you're taking gas and a lot of people have said it before, they, they play, you know, very efficiently with gas while he is on foot. I just don't think that at a higher competitive level, people are going to allow you to walk out with gas just and allow him to do whatever he wants. I really think that he needs to be in a battle wagon. So now you have to invest those points, not only in him, 235, right? Battle wagon, 160 points, and then another 70 points because you want to at least take a minimum of two mega knots, right? Stacks up. That's 300, 465 points, 
right? So 465 points just to take gas, right? And protect him and make him uh, last on the tabletop. And it's the most efficient way, to be quite honest with you, right? So War Boss and Mega Armor, two of them, because I at least have two units of Mega Noms in this list as well. I just think they're they're back, baby, right? They're not as expensive. They're not as cheap, but they're back in the middle. 175 for five of them, I think it's totally worth it at 35 points per model and you definitely want to plug them in your list right like i was telling you before i have the beast boss plugged into the beast nagas two units of those so those would be my battle line you know the staple the auto include units of two units of gretchen i always take those you want to make sure you hold your back 40 you know watch your six uh things like that this unit actually does have the commandos in it i think they're better and war horde i think it plays better into this army list as well right and it helps out since you don't have the ability to have the boys with the big mech and run through screens why don't you create a screen yourself by having commandos so i kind of do the uh defensive side of things try to plug in those roles right if bully boys are more offensive war horde and i know that could be a conundrum right because war horde is seen as being very offensive because they have the sustained hits things like that but i'm talking about more list building things right commandos being the defensive type of unit to stop other units from coming through being our screen to stop them you kind of want to fit those roles you either want to be the one going through screens or creating the screens and i and commandos are amazing for that and like i was detailing two units of mega knobs of five both with tw twin kill saw uh unit of knobs 10 of them that's going to be with the war boss and they're going to be inside of the truck with the follow me lads so they're going to be running out of there at 11 inches Plus, hopefully, you roll a six, right, for your advance and charge. So you're going to be moving 17 inches if you do that, right? Not to mention another 12 inches, a 29-inch threat range if you're charging something. So they can get stuck in there very fast, all pun intended, because this is orcs. And two units of Storm Boys for this one. Because you don't have boss Nick Rot, right? You want to be able to have another unit in there that has the ability to get those backfield objective markers and storm boys are amazing for that they're amazing for killing little chaff units or, or little units that just sit in and the um, deployment zone as well you know like the saboteurs or scout units that are just sitting holding that backfield objective marker having two of them right will really tear those units up so it, it helps you out play the game, play the objective, and be more competitive. And just have those tools and resources to do what you need to do. Two skill rigs, yeah, uh, two skill rigs are absolutely amazing, right? The plus one strength or having the ability to, you know, do lethals and plus one strength, and then three trucks. So yeah, these are the two lists. This is my war horde list and the previous one with the bully boys list. So let me know how you're running your war horde list, right? How are you performing? right now in the new meta i hope you're doing great i hope you're absolutely tearing it up in the tournament scene and i really hope that orcs are back to at least being a tier and we can get a little bit better once we start figuring out what list is really going to work in the new meta i think we're in a better position just want to say thank you very much for everyone who participated and watched the entire show we're back at it again, baby, with orcs. I'm going to continue to do multiple armies, so don't fret. For those of you um, who probably did watch this or who didn't watch this, hopefully you understand that there are multiple armies out there that I love, and I want to share my love with everyone else um, and talking about orcs, right? So how are you going to do in the new meta? Hopefully you're going to be doing amazing. You're going to tear it up at RTTs, GTs, and team events as well. I've always taken orcs for team events. They've always done miraculously. Um, we talked before about how I've done at ATC, you know, two years ago, going best in general, going 
six and zero at ATC, five and one in the last ATC, both with orcs. Right. So hopefully we're back to that level of relevance where orcs are back on top, top tier A listers. Hopefully we just come out on top, man. I just want us to tear it up. I want our win percentage to go back up again and be in the place of a proper walk. Now, thank you everyone. Once again, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Onslaught Gaming 40K, where victory is just a strategy away. And don't forget, WAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA